Thank you for joining us on The Remote Traveler. Today we'll be taking a look at Baalbek, Lebanon. Baalbek was a major place of worship for several ancient civilizations dating all the way back to 9000 BC. What you're seeing here are the Baalbek stones, which are six massive Roman monoliths, including the pregnant woman, which is the largest hewn stone in the world. These are easy to miss because they're not necessarily a part of the main temple complex, but they're for sure worth the stop. Now, as we get ready to enter the temple complex, be prepared for a crossover of many, many civilizations. Baalbek served as a religious epicenter for Mesopotamian, Roman, Christian, and Islamic worship as each group erected monuments and etched their histories in stone for eternity. As they did so long ago, people continue to flock to Baalbek. Today we're going to understand exactly why this magnificent site was a place of pilgrimage as we visit the temples of Bacchus, take a glance at the Temple of Jupiter, Venus, and several other awe-inspiring structures. Prior to 150 BC, Baalbek was dedicated to the Phoenician deities Astarte and Baal, for whom it's named after. Astarte was the Phoenician goddess of war and fertility, so it's easy enough to imagine how the goddess Venus was made a focal point of worship during Roman colonization. Baalbek is the most well-preserved, extensive Roman ruin in all of Lebanon. In spite of earthquakes, storms, tribal conflicts, abandonment, and war, this sprawling complex stands proud. What you're seeing here in front of you is the great court of ancient Heliopolis, which is Baalbek's other name, Temple Complex. As you may have guessed by the name Heliopolis, Sun worship was a very, very uh, major facet of life in Baalbek. The rectangular great court is about three or four acres, and it included a main altar for burnt offering with mosaic floored lustrum basins to its north and south, a subterranean chamber, and three underground passageways about 17 feet wide and 30 feet high, and two of which run east to west, and the third connects them north to south, all bearing inscriptions suggesting their occupation by Roman soldiers. So these columns here are left over from the Temple of Jupiter, and they're about 20 meters high, with a diameter of about two, two and a half meters. As you look out over there, that's the Ba'a Valley far in those mountains, even this time of year, you could see a little bit of snow left over. In 
finally we're coming up to my favorite part of the site, the Temple of Bacchus. This is a Roman lion's head, a gargule. This is part of the Temple of Jupiter. The Temple of Bacchus is 66 meters long, 35 meters wide, and 31 meters high, making it only slightly smaller than the Temple of Jupiter. The Temple of Bacchus, in particular, is remarkably well-preserved and adorned with ornate carvings dating back to the Roman Empire. Bacchus is the Roman equivalent to the Greek god Dionysus. Bacchus was the god of wine, agriculture, and fertility, hence the hedonistic wild nature of Bacchanalian parties, which you could easily picture taking place here long ago. As you see by the lights that were up above there, the Baalbek Music Festival had actually just concluded uh, about a day before when we came here. So once a year, there's like, I, th I think a three or four day music festival here. So Lebanese artists and artists from the outside will come and give these amazing performances. That's another thing you can do if you're visiting. Thanks again for watching this video on Baalbek and for letting me tour you around. Please be sure to like and subscribe to the Remote Traveler. And once again, I hope that you enjoy our future videos.